Hello folks and welcome to the E39 uh, which I affectionately refer to as the land yacht and uh, I've been promising you guys for a while now that I would make an, uh, an update video uh, just on this car because we haven't really featured it in any of the series uh, for quite some time now um, the last job that I did on it earlier in the year was fitting a tow bar, which was fairly mundane. But I guess what I really wanted to talk to you guys about today is just what it's been like um, for coming up on three years now uh, with a electric converted E39 5 Series BMW saloon car. Um, as my daily driver because that's exactly what this car is uh, this is the car that I use to take me to work five and sometimes six days a week uh, it's the car that I use for um, short and medium haul journeys anything up to and including 100 mile uh, round trips it's the car that I use to haul uh, trailers to the local dump as you will have uh, seen me me do um, particularly when I started building the um, when we've started building the E46 drift uh, there was a lot of things to get rid of there uh, so I refurbished a trailer that I had put a tow bar on the, the car and it has given me the ability uh, to haul oversized uh, rubbish and things around. And this car has done that without breaking a sweat. Um, when I got this car, uh, there was... Um, I remember this now exactly. There was 150... 56,000 mile, miles on the odometer. Uh, there is now just a nibble under 215,000 miles. Um, so that's quite a lot of mileage. Um, typically, the car gets uh, charged twice a day, uh, once at, at night. Um, and uh, once at work. Um, I have the facility at work to use three phase power and uh, that gives us a much uh, a much shorter charge time. Um, the batteries um, that I used in the vehicle uh, are the China Aviation Lithium Battery uh, also known as Calb uh, 180 amp hour cells, and um, can I remember how many is in the car now? I think we have 64 cells in the car at the minute, but the nominal voltage um, is around about 175 volts or so. And those cells were bottom balanced once and uh, have never had a balance since then, and they're all rock solid. Now your next question is, now that we're talking about batteries, is have I ran the pack flat? And yes, twi twice. Um, neither times, fortunately, uh, did I need to be recovered. The first time I was on a particularly long trip, it was 111 miles. Um, at the time I did have the fast charging facilities working on this car at one or two of the charging stations that actually obeyed the CHEDEMO protocol and uh, I was able to uh, basically roll into my local filling station that had the fast charger uh, basically on fumes. Uh, the battery voltage was tanked. Um, banged it in on the fast charger, gave it a squirt enough to get back back home and uh, charged it up normally. Um, the second time then was again on an occasion whereby I had returned home from work and the usual happened, uh, something needed to be done 
so I had to pretty much just jump back in the car and do the same journey again um, and got back home here on a you know a pretty low battery state but again just charged up the car without any problems um, so that's kind of the broad view of the battery because I suppose this is the question that I get asked the most is oh you know are you seeing battery degradation how far can you go how fast can you charge and all this so another few things that I'm just going to address here are kind of little myth buster things is I use a clutchless manual um, gearbox system in this car and I had people giving me the direst of predictions uh, when I started off here telling me that within oh even you know a, a few thousand miles at most the synchro hubs would be burnt out of the gearbox and uh, I wouldn't be able to change gears and so on well guess what guys that hasn't happened the synchros are working just as well to today um, as they were uh, when I did the conversion. And it's 215,000 miles on this gearbox. So it's not new. It's not like it's a factory fresh box. Um, typically I use third and fifth gear and reverse. That's pretty much it. Um, you take off in, th in third gear. Uh, drive up to about 40 miles per hour in that gear and then shift up to fifth when I want to go out onto the motorway. Um, performance and acceleration in this car is nothing really to get too excited about, but that's not what it was built for. Um, it you know has a not to 60 of probably around about 9 to 10 seconds. Uh, I don't push it. Uh, but that's more than uh, than adequate uh, to keep up with tra with traffic merge out onto motorways that kind of thing. Top speed is well over a hundred miles per hour. Uh, not that I would be testing that on a public road. Um, the car itself, um, I have had zero maintenance on it at all up until today and that's kind of one of the reasons i decided to make the video today is that um for the for the last few years it has basically sailed through all of its nct tests without a single problem the first test yes there were problems but they were historical problems that the car had prior to my doing the conversion so there was some suspension steering braking problems all that kind of thing so we got all that stuff patched up and since then there's been zero problems but today we managed to fail and we failed on steering rack gaiters rubbers covers whatever you want to call them so picked up uh, two more and we're going to be fitting those and no I won't bother videoing that because it's a it's a very generic process and um, is not really uh, the kind of thing we're trying to cover here. There must probably a million, a million better um, ways to, or people to watch doing that kind of work than me. But we're going to get that fixed and get the car retested, and we will be all set. Um, so, driving the car is one of the things that I look forward to on a daily basis. Um, I suppose there is a kind of a smug ego thing, you know, oh look, you know, here's me and my fancy converted Beamer, you know, am not I great? <laughs> but, um, no, I do enjoy it. Um, and I suppose it, it can be a little bit depressing sometimes when particularly I see how little progress there has been in this in this country on adopting EVs um, I think that there is a missed opportunity here um, for us to really take a lead in that but I guess that one's above my pay, pay grade guys so what what else um, what else about the car we've covered the clutchless manual that all works great dc motor um 
had predictions that you know because I had such a large battery in there and I would have enough energy on board that I could do longer trips that I would burn up the motor. Guess what? That hasn't happened either. And it's a second hand forklift motor from the 1970s. But what I did do is I put a lot of forced air cooling on it. Uh, we have a one of those turbocharger, electric turbocharger things on there. And I've also got a bilge blower from a boat. So there's uh, there's quite a lot of airflow going through there. Um, brushes on the motor I haven't gone near yet. But I suspect at some stage soon uh, they'll need to be done. Um, might have said in previous videos I have removed the fast charging facility from the car. Because there would have been very little point keeping it there. Uh, because now uh, I don't think there are any fast charging stations in the country uh, that will charge a vehicle anything really below 300 volts I would imagine. Uh, we'll be getting to grips with some of that stuff on the Panzer project fairly soon. But just to, to close out here I know this has been a bit of a talking video and probably not very exciting for people but um, this is the car as I say that I drive on a daily basis and it's just it's just incredibly reliable hail rain shower snow ice wind anything I just get in turn the key drive it um, so that's about it guys really I uh, just wanted to give you this update it's been a little bit of a time coming um, and above all uh, I think the lesson that I can take from this car is, is that with readily available technologies that one can buy off the shelf today, and a little bit of ingenuity thrown in, you can take what wouldn't have been one of the most fuel efficient vehicles in the universe to begin with, put some crap into it, and you've got a 100 mile range 100 mile per per hour vehicle that you can drive um i've got i've carried five people in the car i've carried everything from concrete blocks to um car engines to uh i don't know what anything you you name it i've hauled it in this in this vehicle um and it's entirely uh, practical like that all right guys i'm not gonna totally bore everyone to death if i haven't done so already so thanks a lot for tuning in uh we will be back soon with some more regularly scheduled programming uh, on our various projects so please do keep an eye on my channel for that uh, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and we will see you on the flip side thanks guys bye bye Thank you.